Hey everybody, and welcome to the Tri Dad Fleet. My name is Craig, and if you're new to the channel, I'm glad you're here, and I hope you find something of value. But if you're a returning athlete, welcome back, and please share something about your last workout down in the comments. And let's get going, because it's a little cold in the home gym this morning. All right, so you made the decision to get back in the water as an adult. Congratulations, because this is a huge step on its own. It's a big commitment. But before we get to the details, I'd like to quickly speak to any potential fear or anxiety or nerves that you may be feeling. I hope you're not, but if you are, just know it's completely normal. Going to a pool for the first time can be a bit unnerving. You don't know where to go, which lane to swim in, where to get changed, not to mention the real possibility of not knowing how to swim. The only way to get past this, well, is to just do it. Every time you go to the pool, it will get easier and easier, I promise. Unlike the bike portion of triathlon, you only need a few pieces of gear to get started in the water. The first, and possibly most important, goggles. They come in all shapes, sizes, colors, you name it. When picking out your first set, I strongly recommend going somewhere where you can try them on. See how they fit, you know, how they feel, check your peripheral vision, uh, how tinted they are, and so on. I have a few different pairs that I use for different things. So for example, these are a pair of Speedos. They're super light and they have fairly small eyepieces, which are great if you're swimming in a straight line in a pool and you don't really need a ton of peripheral. They're fairly tint free, meaning they won't dim the light that much. Again, that's great for indoors. I'll sometimes choose these for short speed work or the twice a year swim meet that I actually enjoy participating in. Uh, next. Come on, are my tried and true aquaspheres. I love these goggles. And they're my first real pair back in the day when I got started in all this. They're really light. They have larger eyepieces here, you can see, and great peripheral. So I can see you know, left and right, right? Uh, these are all the things that I look for in open water swimming. You can see they're not as tinted. So on super bright days outside, they're not the best, but overall, these were my favorite goggles for many years. And they used to be pure clear when I bought them, but you can see how years of open water swimming has uh, changed their color, let's say, right? All right, next are my custom goggles from the Magic 5. These are custom made to fit the contours of your face. And after you download the app, you just do a quick scan and that's all you need. Uh, a few weeks later, they show up at your door, ready to go. They come in a cool carrying case here. They have two holes in the bottom for venting, you know, for airflow and stuff, but I usually keep them out of this case until they're completely dry. The fit, the fit's pretty awesome. They're super light and they have a really low profile feel. So if I turn my head, you can kind of see they sit, you know, flat on my face. Uh, they have just the right amount of bluish tint. I don't know if you can see that at all. Can you see the bluish tint? How about if I go like that? No, okay. I've used these in tons of open water practices and swims, races, all that stuff. Um, especially Ironman Atlantic City, USAT Nationals, some of the bigger ones, I've used these in both of those. They're also the only goggle that I enjoy using in the pool and open water. Last, these ZR things, these are giant. I don't know where I got these, I don't know why I bought them, but I'm showing them to you because you always need a backup, always. And these are mine. Whichever pair that you decide to go with, you can use a simple and old school press test to see how they fit, you ready? So take your goggles. Oh my God, these things are so dark. Gently press to create a seal. And if they stay on, one, two, one, two, three, then they should fit pretty well. You can also see what the exchange policy is wherever you purchase your goggles. Most pro shops of pools will let you try them out and exchange them after a swim if they don't fit well. You can get a pair of goggles for about 20 or 30 bucks. I think I paid 40 or so, something like that for my aquaspheres, which as I said, I used almost exclusively for years and years. If you really start to get into this and you wanna treat yourself, I think I paid around 90 bucks for my Magic Fives, but that was after almost seven years of swimming. There's no need to go crazy either way. Just get a comfortable pair and get in the water. Next, a swimsuit. And no, guys, I'm not talking about those old, oversized baggy ones that we used to wear to the beach, that awful cheese grater lining thing. I'm not talking about that. 
I'm talking about a real swimsuit, a Speedo or a pair of jammers. Swimming, when you think about it, is really about being as slippery and as sleek in the water as pot, sleek, I guess that's the sign for sleek, um, in the water as possible. And if you think you're gonna do that, dragging a few gallons of water in your pockets, well, good luck. Uh, you really don't need anything more than these. These are a pair of jammers from uh, Team Zoot, which I'm a proud member of. I still paid for all this stuff, it's not sponsored. These should fit snug, but not uncomfortable. You don't wanna be uncomfortably tight, but they should be you know, snug. Make sure when you get out of the pool to do a simple rinse after every time, after each use. It's recommended, because that'll keep this material, which is, uh, I don't know what this is actually. I'll have to, I guess it's just like a spandexy kind of thing. It'll keep it from deteriorating. Because the last thing you would want is to have someone point out to you that your backside is visible through a deteriorated suit, but that's never happened to me. Oh, and uh, tie them tight before you jump in the pool too, all right? Ladies, you don't have ugly oversized trunks like we do. You probably already know what you need, but if not, here's an example here. Uh, either way, expect to spend between 40 and 60 bucks for a pair of jammers. Please don't go crazy, especially when you're just getting started. My first pair of jammers was around 35 bucks. I bought these almost eight years ago and still have them. I probably shouldn't have them. You can see this tag. I mean, it's like it's disintegrating. It's falling apart. But hey, you never know. All right. Uh, last on deck, you need a water bottle. You don't. You may not feel like you're working hard or even notice that you're sweating, but you are. There's a tendency to ignore fluid loss or sweating when you're in the water. And hey, I get it. You're already wet. How do you know you're sweating kind of thing, right? You'd be amazed though how much fluid is lost during an hour of exercise. I'll make sure to cover that in another video. Take a drink every 15 minutes or so, nothing crazy. And uh, plain water is totally fine as you're getting started. If you need or if you want a little extra boost, I like these electrolyte packets. Uh, two of them I really like. One by Liquid IV that I don't think I have right now. Um, I don't. And then this other one I really like, Watermelon Salt Flavor by LMNT. These are awesome. I'll cover these in more detail in the Nutrition 101 video. Also, in your bag, pack a banana or a protein shake, some, some, something like that for when you get out of the water. It's really important that you replenish those fluids and calories when you get out. I think that's it. So now you should have all the necessary gear. So in the next video, we'll get in the water and look at a few tips and tricks to get you comfortable on day one, okay? If you enjoyed this video, please like, and if you wanna continue on this journey with me, which I really hope you do, please consider subscribing. See you next time.